figure I'll go and do some minor upgrades to Tektronik TDS 5034B Digital Phosphorus Oscilloscope. And one of the things I've been kind of wanting to do, but I've been kind of holding off because I do have the software, but the spinning rust drive wore to fail on this thing, so I wasn't really too worried about it, was to upgrade the spinning rust drive, aka hard drive in this thing. And we're going to go ahead and put an SSD in there. And the good thing about it is then I'll have a backup of of course, whatever's on their hard drive, of course, and stuff like that, and keep that hard drive as spare, and then I can run it off SSD, which is obviously going to improve the performance. The other thing, too, we're going to go ahead and do, because there's no point in just doing that, we're going to go and upgrade the processor to a Pentium 4 hyperdrenning that's, it won't support a Core 2 Dual. I know people will be probably saying, well, why not just put a Core 2 Dual on there? The bias on this board will not support it, so... We're just going to put a Pentium 4 Hyperdrive in there and call it a day. And we're also going to go ahead and upgrade the memory from the single channels. They're only running run memory to actually be able to run in dual channel and stuff like that. So that's the three upgrades we're going to do to this thing. I also went ahead to, and already, where is it at? Let me go ahead and see right here. Oh, here it is. I spliced in a SATA cable into this um cable right here because it does not come with any SATA connections on there so we can run the SSD drive I could have yeah just brought an adapter and connected it to it but I hate messes and you know adding another adapter to it would have made it even more messier than what it is there's already one here running the DVD burner so I might as well you know keep it as clean as possible of course we're gonna probably just stick the SSD somewhere back to here instead of using the original mount. Then that way I can put the original hard drive back in there disconnected and stuff like that. So I don't lose it and stuff while being able to run the SSD and we'll just run the SATA cable and the power right behind this DVD drive right there and just stick it onto the back of that. As you can see I have the drive somewhat, you know, just how you do it but we're just gonna go ahead and clone that spinning rust drive which was in the oscilloscope to the new ssd right there and for the ssd i have one of the usb to sata converters and then as far as the hard drive i just plugged it into the power supply into the main board of the pc so we can go ahead and clone and you can see right there it popped up and this is the ssd drive and this here is the actual hard drive from the actual oscilloscope so what i use is i use an older version of this software right here to go ahead and do the clones all right and once you pull it up obviously make sure all your drives pick up and you can see there's the empty drive and then this is the drive we're gonna clone so we're gonna go ahead and pretty much click this one here actually Let's go ahead and click that there to make sure we clone that partition and everything. We're going to clone that. Then it's going to tell us what destination, what drive do we want to put this on. And we're going to go ahead and just put it on this empty drive right here, making sure we got the right one, which is F. All right. And just make sure everything's correct, all the partitions and everything are selected and stuff like that. And then here you go, we're going to clone it. So let's go next. Okay, and then it's going to say, do you want to schedule and stuff like that? We don't want to schedule the backup. All right. Here, it's going to go ahead and show right there. Then we're going to finish it. It's going to say one backup. Now, we don't need to save this. We're just going to go ahead and clone it. All right. It's going to say, of course, our target, which is the drive that they go to, is going to be overridden because it's going to be repartitioned and everything. And then there you go to go ahead and clone the drive now. Now you can also use, there's different um, software for cloning, like you can use Clonezilla. You can also use the Heron boot disk and stuff like that that has also pretty much a live CD. And then it has the cloning software and all that there. There's different ways of cloning a drive pretty much. It's pretty easy and straightforward. But I'm going to go ahead and let this clone and then I'll be right back once it's done cloning. As you can see there, the clone was successful. It completed in two minutes, so it's done. You can exit out now. And then, you know, dismount the drive and stuff, of course. 
and you can see there it's the same size if you want to you can extend the partition and stuff i gotta see what windows 2000 will support up to but yeah either way it goes at least the partitions there from this one to this one now so the disc is done cloning we're going to put this into the oscilloscope but here's the adapter that i am using for those that are interested in buying one i paid probably like about 10 bucks on ebay a while back for it it's done pretty good you can also just hook it up directly to the motherboard to the sata ports if you want to too as well but i'm gonna go ahead and get this off the adapter go ahead and pretty much plug in the scope and see if the scope actually boots before we assemble it so went ahead and plugged in the SATA connector and also went ahead and added the SATA port onto the power connector right there. Your scope's not going to have that on there. You will either need to buy an adapter or get one of these connectors and add it in yourself. Of course, making sure that you have it wired correctly. I also went ahead and put in the CPU and also both memory sticks. So let's go ahead and see if this thing actually still boots up and we didn't destroy anything. Okay, no smoke, good sign, and good, I think it posted, yep, so we know the CPU is working, let's just see if it actually boots, should, assuming the clone is actually successful, okay, huh, we're not getting anything, oh no, there you go, start, uh-huh, Yep, it is booting. Yep, so this is working. It looks like it is successful. Let's go ahead and make sure it boots all the way, of course. Oh yeah, it's faster. You could tell. Yes. Oh, much faster. Yeah, so... That SSD made a difference. Yep, there you go. She booted all the way back up and the mods were successful. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, repartition. I mean, not repartition, but extend the partition on that SSD, of course, and stuff like that. And I'll be right back once I'm done. So next step you want to do is kind of figure out where you're going to mount the SSD. And you can get a 3.5 to 2.5 inch adapter. Being the fact it uses these goofy mounts and those adapters are not that great. Rather just get rid of that whole entire mess all together and mount it back here where it's going to be nice and clean. And made a template. And already routed the holes pretty much for it. So that's where it's going to screw down to. And then I'll just run the cable neatly over there and stuff and it's out of sight, out of mind pretty much. So there's the SSD now fully mounted. So I'll go ahead and clean up the rest of it and then put the cover back on there and hope she still works. So I went ahead and finished the uh, upgrades that I was going to do to the oscilloscope and went ahead and removed the spinning rust out of it and put an SSD inside it now. So now I've got solid state drive. Also removed the one stick of RAM because they were running this in single channel even though the board and the OS is capable of running in dual channel. So also went ahead and upgrade the CPU I was at it, upgrade to a Pentium 4 2.8 gigahertz and enabled hyperdreading on it. So let's go and see if the scope still fires up. It should though. And there you go, she posted. Good thing about this is I didn't have to reload the OS or install drivers or anything like that because it's a direct clone. But if your hard drive does fail, 
you do have to of course reload the software and all the drivers and stuff like that thankfully i do actually have the images to actually be able to do that and stuff so it's not a big deal the hard drive would have failed but went ahead and put an ssd it's gonna be way more reliable and also quieter too you can see she booted up much much faster as well so yep this was a success and of course you could do the same thing to yours too as well if your drive is still good you can clone it if not there is a guy that put all the images and also even the northern ghost image too as well for the actual software for the scope and stuff like that you can download it burn it to a cd and then you know of course reload it the thing you got to watch out for depending on what motherboard you got and stuff in the drive you're using you probably will manually have to put the driver in and pretty much how you do that is of course he has a whole entire tutorial on how to do it and stuff pretty much you got to go ahead and load the hive you got to go ahead and actually put the um, INF file inside the directory and then go ahead and point it to that so it can say hey look here's the driver pretty much and then you unload the hive put the drive back in and then of course you won't get that inaccessible boot blue screen of death pretty much but either way it goes it was a success because this is a direct clone it isn't a big deal but if you're loading it from fresh it might be an issue depending on the board and stuff because I know they use different boards over the years and they revise these so depending on what board you might run into a blue screen if you have to do a fresh reload but it's an easy fix and I'll probably link where he actually goes in detail on exactly how to do it in the bottom of the video and stuff so you can see in the description and if you do have a 000007 inaccessible boot error you can just go ahead and go to that link and it tells you how to fix it of course you need another computer to be able to put the hard drive in so you can go and do the registry edit and stuff like that but either way it goes it was a success and i'm glad i did it